Hi there, insiders, and thanks so much for joining us today online. I'm Derek Shore from Houston Life, which airs weekdays at 3 p.m. right here on KPRC2. And if you're an insider, that means you can see me and hear me right now. Thank you for joining us as we test up test out this new arena and we're about to witness an eco art demonstration. So it's something many of us have probably never seen before. But if you did see yesterday's Houston Life, then you've already met 25 year old local eco artist and special needs advocate Grant Manier. Grant is also an author, actor and illustrator, but we'll tell you a little more on that at the end of the demonstration. And if you'd like to see Grant's interview with us on Houston Life, you can find that by visiting our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, so a little business. Before we meet our featured artist, I know some of you are following along and creating at home or wherever you are. And once you complete your work of art, or maybe you already have an eco-friendly art piece you have made before, send it along to us, insider at kprc.com. We would love to see it and hopefully share it as well. Also today, two lucky insiders will receive a signed Grant Monnier original. These pieces are very valuable, by the way. We're gonna get to more on that as well a little later on. A piece recently sold for, get this, $30,000. So during today's demonstration, we will ask you to type Gimme Art, that's G-I-M-M-E, -M -E, Gimme Art, in the chat. You can find the chat box right there on your screen. Then we will draw a name and reveal the winners. All right, you ready to meet the man of the hour? Grant Monnier and his mom, Julie, are joining us now from their home, along with KPRC2 meteorologist Justin Stapleton. Justin, how you doing out there? Hello, my friend, how are you? Hello, KPRC2 Insiders. Thank you for joining us today. We are so excited for you to be on this inaugural journey here. We are in Grant's house. Can you believe that? They were so kind of us uh, to have us here so that he could show you this demonstration. So hopefully you've had a chance to get your materials that you need. Uh, Grant's been kind of giving us a little bit of a nibble of what he's gonna do today. He's very exciting. So speaking of, let's meet the man himself here. So there is our good friend, Grant. This is his mom, Julie. Hi. Julie's been very kind to uh, help us set up all this as well. And so what we talked about today Julie, is that we're going to do something similar to what we have the sunflower there, smaller, but we're just going to do a little bit of a bigger piece here, right? right? That's right. Correct. All right. We're very excited to get this started. Hi there. I'm Julie Coy. I am Grant's mom, and I am his manager. So you know what that makes me? The momager. There you go. There you the go. Momager, right? So I do all the scheduling, all the phone calls, even today's event. Yeah. And this is my son, Grant Monnier, the eco artist. I'm going to be here in case there are questions, and Grant will be too busy to get have this done in the less time that we have. Sure. So if I have to answer the questions, I will do that for Grant, plus I'll help him with his techniques as well. So take Perfect. it away, Grant. You ready to get started, bud? I am. Okay, I'm going to let the expert start. Take it away, Grant. All right, buddy. First off, my name is Grant Monnier, and I'm known as the Eco Artist. What does that mean? It means that I reduce, reuse, and recycle, and then upcycle paper materials to create beautiful eco art masterpieces. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create a sunflower. Here's one right here, but we are going to make a bigger one, all using recycled materials. Now, this process takes about three to four hours long because of drying time, but I prepared materials ahead of time because we only have 40 minutes. So, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need are your supplies. You're gonna need an 11 by 14 canvas. You're gonna need clear glue, one bottle, and this is the secret sauce. You're gonna need your paintbrush, you're going to need a small container for your glue. You're also going to need a ruler, some scissors, a marker, and your wipes or wet towels because this can get messy. There's no paint needed. And as for materials, you're going to need your blue paper. This is going to be for the background. You'll need about three to five sheets. You'll need yellow paper. We're gonna use these for the sunflower petals. You'll need about one or two sheets. And of course, you'll need green paper, or as I like to use, wallpaper. We're gonna use this for the stems and the leaves. 
And finally, you're going to need, here it is, you're going to need your puzzles, brown puzzles. These will be for the seeds in the center of the sunflower. You're also going to need additional colored puzzles for the butterflies. You'll be doing about 60 pieces. And lastly, you'll need two hairpins for the antenna of the butterfly. Now, Grant, all of these materials are generally what people can pick up at the store, right? If they right, go at to your, Joanne Fabrics, Holly Lobby, wherever it is that you like to pick up your stuff, right? That's right, at your local craft store. Perfect, okay, great. So, let's get started by preparing the materials. First, we're gonna start with our blue paper. I'm gonna make two by two squares. So I'm gonna cut them up just like this. This is how I do it. And then you're gonna make your squares just like this. You can even go two at a time. Don't worry about making a straight line. They don't have to be straight. And then voila. But to save us time, time I already have some squares pre-cut. I'm gonna add this to them. And voila. Next, we're gonna take our yellow paper and create the sunflower petals. Now here, I already have a stencil made. It's about three inches long. And we're gonna need about 20 petals. Here we have 18, so I'm gonna trace out the last two. I'm gonna take my pen, I'm going to trace this on one side and then trace it on the other side. And voila, we'll make one more. Go up and down, and then up, uh, and then down and up. And voila, we have, all, we have our 20 petals. Next, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut up our petals. We're gonna follow the line, give it that good curve. Right about there. There's one. Now we're gonna cut out the other. Follow the curve, just like that. And then the other side. And voila. But to speed up the process, and of course, as you're cutting these petals, your paper is eventually going to look like this. All cut up. But to speed up the process, we have petals already pre-cut. Now we're gonna make our stem. We already have some green wallpaper already cut out. So we're gonna need about 10 inches and about a half inch wide. So I'm gonna start by making our, cutting out our stem. And don't worry about making it a perfectly straight line. Stems aren't always perfectly straight. Now why do you use wallpaper, Grant? Ah. Well, uh, there, we have lots of wallpaper that people have given us over the years and we have found at local stores like mm -hmm. Goodwill and other places. But wallpaper just has so much good colors and, that's how, and this is how I work. I like using all these beautiful colors. There's, now we have our stem ready. Now we're going to make our landscape. And you're gonna want about at least two, inch, two inches I'm gonna cut a curve line, which means it doesn't need to be perfect. Watch this. Cut it out, curve it, cut, curve, cut, and curve. Voila, we have our landscape ready to go. So now that we have these, now we're gonna need our puzzles. Oh, that's right, I almost forgot, folks. We're gonna need our leaves. To make our leaves, we have a five by five paper ready. And to cut out our leaves, we're gonna use the same stencil for the petals. We're gonna put on the back of the paper, take our pen, and we're gonna trace them out, just like this. And we're gonna want two of these. So I'm gonna, tr so I'm gonna cut out and trace one more. There we go. Now, I'm gonna take, our, take the scissors, 
Okay, I'm just gonna follow the line. One more. And there we have our leaves. So all of that is ready to go. And so now we move on to the puzzles. And this is my signature mark. As you can see here in this puzzle box is missing a few puzzles, but don't throw them away. Just give me a call and I'll take them off your hands. <laughs> so we're gonna need to find our brown puzzles. See, what I do is, is go through the process of looking through all these puzzles and to look for our browns, but I already have 15 brown pieces already found and ready to go. Just, so that way we can save time. I'm gonna take this piece of paper and now I'm going to show you the process of peeling each puzzle piece one at a time. Take them all out. Now I'm gonna take one and then I'm gonna peel the print right off just like that. And so why is it important to take off just the print, Grant, versus use the puzzle piece itself? Well, the way, what's important is peeling the print off, that way it's nice and paper thin. Because if I try working with it when it's thick, it's a little difficult. But this way, it's thin and I can use the beautiful color it has. How'd you get into using puzzle pieces of all things? As you said, that's your signature uh, move movement in it's, all of your art here. It's like I said, I liked using beautiful colors. And when I saw the puzzles had beautiful colors that I need, I just put two and two together and I peeled the prints right off. Though it's a, it's a bit of a process, especially since I don't have fingernails. So my mom helps me out from time to time with peeling the puzzle pieces. There you go. That's right. So that's the process, but to speed up, to speed things along, we have some puzzles already peeled. It's like you've done television before, Grant. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. The cooking channel. That's right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these away so we can get these out of our way. So now, uh, a question I just thought of nope. here, and I bet we probably will have some folks that are thinking this at home as well, Grant. Is, is something like this, what you're showing here, is this something you could do with kids? You could do with, let's say, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, elementary school age kids, high schoolers, junior high kids. Well, of like course. That. In fact, anyone can do this. This is not something just for children. It's something that anyone can can learn and they can do. So now, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna make next are my butterflies. So I'm gonna take some paper here. I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna tr trace and I'm gonna go down like half the paper, just like this because we're gonna make two butterflies. So now we have two halves. So I'm gonna trace the first one out. First, we're gonna make the head of the butterfly. Then we're gonna make the tail come all the way like this, make a tail, point it, and then come back up. And then we're gonna make the, make the wings, basically upper wing, bottom wing. One more time. Upper wing, bottom wing. And then we come on the other side and make a smaller butterfly. Make the tail, and then we come just a little bit from the head and make our top wing, bottom wing, top wing, bottom wing, wing. So that way, these are ready. And now, and you're going, to, and of course, you're going to need your puzzle pieces for these as well. We have additional color ones, and you're going to need, and you're going to want about 60 pieces. And of course, hairpins, these will be for their antennas. And of course, if this doesn't work, we, you can always purchase butterfly stencils at your local craft store, or you can look for images of butterflies on the internet. And so, now we begin. I'm gonna put this one down. So you're telling us that was the easy part, Grant. This is where the fun begins. That's right, everything is ready to go, so. Let's make a sunflower. Oh, here we go. So first things first, we're gonna to need to prepare the glue. I'm gonna open up the cup and take our glue bottle and pour some glue. That way it's in, in ready to go. 
And this is the type of glue that folks can get at any craft store. That's here. right, clear okay. glue. Perfect. Right, and then we're gonna take our brush and our canvas and our blue paper. And as you can see, to speed things along, I've already prepared half of the canvas. So together, we're gonna finish the second half. So here we go. First, we take the brush and we dip it into the glue. And then we spread the glue onto the canvas, just like this. One more time. And then we just take a piece of paper and then we place it on the canvas and put a little glue on top. That way it stays down. Now, you know, the beauty of clear glue is that you can see your work. You can see the area that you're working on. And well, it just leaves, you can leave no gaps. As you can see, I'm putting the paper together tight, tight together. Now I noticed with your pieces of paper there, Grant, they're not all perfect squares or rectangles. Nope, you why, don't, they don't have to why be do perfect. You, why do you like it a little more abstract that way? Yeah, you don't have to be perfect. I mean, perfect, I mean, if you want to go squares, you can, but really this, they don't have to be perfect at all. And here's the thing, this is, when I originally started out, I was using white glue. And, and it wasn't easy, because you know, white glue, white canvas. <laughs> Probably a little tough. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Oh, it was. So, and here's some fun information. Clear glue came out less than 10 years ago. It's like they heard I was coming. <laughs> So as you can see, this is the process. We glue, then we layer. Whoop, that one's getting away. We layer, and then we brush. And again. And you we, don't need we, a lot of glue. I'm noticing that you're putting just a very thin layer on there too, right, Grant? Mm-hmm. If you put some on the bottom and the top, it helps it stay down. But depending on how heavy the piece, you could use uh, more glue. And Grant's not concerned about what piece he's going to use next because it creates that abstract look. And so he just grabs a piece of paper and places it on there. The beauty about paper, if you make some mistake, it's not like paint, you just grab another piece of paper. That's right. Great point. So here, folks, we just keep doing this process over and over again. So how many, how many hours a week do you think you spend on some of these? You know, we, we showed at the very top here, uh, Grant, and when you were talking with Derek yesterday on Houston Life about some of your artwork, we had some of it in Studio B, and it, I have to tell you, it was just breathtaking. Oh, and thank I can you. imagine how long it took for some of those bigger pieces. Oh, I try to put in at least 25 hours a week so I don't burn out. And, if, and here's a little, here's something, here's something you, sh you, can, you should know. The, there are two types of pieces that I create. Okay. I make simple pieces and I make complex pieces. Simple pieces can be made over and over again, and they can take about a week or two to create. But complex pieces, like uh, the ones you see behind me, mm -hmm. they can take over a month to create. I can imagine. That because there is drying time, I have to look for my materials, I have art shows and conference to do during the time as well. So. Well, it's unlike working with paint, working with paper can take time. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Grant, while you're finishing that, I'm going to toss it back to Derek Shore real quick because we've got some giveaways that we're doing here. Ooh, fun. Said as well, exactly. They're your paintings, my friend. So, Derek, why don't you take it away? Yeah, well, Justin, that is very exciting news, I'm sure, for the people who are tuning in and following along. You have got a front row seat there, along with Grant and his mom, Julie. Justin, I've got to say, I am totally captivated. And I agree. I agree with Grant. I think the clear glue people knew he was coming about 10 years ago when they created that. Oh, so they must. I, I, well, you know, the funny <laughs> thing is, Derek, it's, it's a game changer, because I just remember putting that white glue on my hand and freaking the girls out in school. <laughs> that was about the extent of my artistic ability. Oh, I remember those days as well, Justin. Justin, when you would pretend you had peeling skin, right, with the white glue? Yep. <laughs> All right. Worked well, listen, every time. <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to work with a clear glue, but this is a fascinating process to watch. And to our viewers who are tuned in right now, if you would like your chance to win this exact what piece of art Grant is creating right now, there. or perhaps you could win one of his other I'm Sunflower Originals, so type Gimme Art in the chat box. That's Gimme Art. 
We will give you a few minutes to do that, and then we will announce the winners a little bit later on. But in the meantime, Justin, this is such a cool process to watch. And we should point out, we mentioned it earlier, Grant uses recycled materials like wallpaper, calendars, magazines, puzzles, and yep. more. Recently, he raised $30,000. Mm -hmm. One Down of his art pieces here. was auctioned off for that right? amount for Be Easily an Angel, covered. which is an organization providing help to children living with disabilities or challenges. The first time, you always can go yeah, over it. Yeah, it is, you know, and, it, it, and I can just tell just in the short amount of time we've been here talking to him, talking to his mom, that, you know, this is something he's very passionate about. And it's not just the art itself, it's the bigger cause, you know. Um, it was interesting yesterday when I was looking at the pieces that we had over at Houston Life, I saw on the back that he, when he signs every single one on the back, it's actually a really neat little signature that they put back there as well. And I took a picture of it because it was something I thought, you know what, this is, this is something really people need to understand. And it says, and I'll read it for you, it says, thank you for helping me raise the awareness of special talents. Why do you why, why do you sign that on the back of your on your signatures, Grant? What is the, I, I assume that that's got some good special meaning to you. Well, we used to say we used to say thank you for helping me raise the awareness of autism talents. Uh -huh. But then, as we were growing and a lot more people were very interested in Grant's artwork, we wanted to help everyone, the larger spectrum. And so now it's thank you for helping me raise the awareness of special talents, not just autism. So we've raised money. Grant, how much have you raised for organizations? I have raised over $350,000 for organizations and for children and first responders. That is phenomenal. It's amazing, isn't it, when it's something as simple as just saying, hey, I like to paint, I like to you know, do puzzles, and then you find out, you know what? I can do some good for not only just uh, you know folks that are near and dear to me, but people all over the country and all over the world. Yes, we donate all over the nation. We don't grant, donate grants art prints. That is amazing. All right, so you see where we're at here, Derek. We we we've gotten the baseline down. So we this is our our background. Is yep. that right, Grant? Okay, yep. so we've our got back a background to our landscape. Yep, our background is finished. So this is why we have wipes to clean your fingers afterwards. So now we're going to take our ruler and put the stem on. So we'll go from the bottom to the bottom, to bottom up. We're going to want about 10 inches. And we're going to take our stem and put it right where the 10 inches at and come all the way to the bottom. And if it goes over the canvas, don't worry. Just take your scissors and just clip it. And while Grant's setting that up as well, as Derek mentioned, folks, go ahead and uh, we'd love to have you jump into that uh, potential getaway, or the uh, giveaway, I should say, for some of his art. And the, and the art, I can tell you, in the, in the house here that we're seeing is just spectacular. So, Derek, anytime you get ready for a winner, you just uh, let me know. Yeah, I will. I will shout it out. There's and also a reminder. Now we're going to put our petals on next. And I know Grant can't hear me at the petals, moment. We have about 20 petals. And we're going to start with the first one. I'm going to put it right at the very top. And you're going to want about a one inch gap. So right about there. Oh, that's OK. D, any questions you have or whatnot that pop up, you send them to me and I'll make sure Grant can. Yeah, for sure. And I want to remind our viewers that, that they can, down, if they're like following this. along, they can share their images, send them then, to insider at kprc.com so we can like see them and share them. Work toward the center. And I, have, and I have a little something called, this is the process I like to work with. Put one like this like and line like that. I like to go north, south, East and west. Boom, 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 boom. And put these four down. And then we're going to take four more petals and put them in each open area. And you don't have to worry about uh, making a perfect circle. You can move your petals up and down, up and down, just like this. So basically, make your sunflower however you want your sunflower to look. That's right. It's your impression. There's one area done. Now let's move on to the next one. We got one. We got two. Three. And four. Okay. Yeah, now for area three. One. Two, 
three, and four. All right, Grant, so here's the question I know I have, and I will bet you everyone that is watching right now wants to know, you, sir, have you ever taken any art classes for this? Ooh, I have taken some art classes when I was a kid back in school. That's where I learned about collaging, but I'm mostly self-taught. So something that you just decided you were like, you know what, I enjoy doing this, and you just kind of monkey around and see what you can do. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Now, and you, one of the, no. oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, one of the interesting things is, is that you were talking a second ago when you were talking about collages. I know for folks, if you're not necessarily familiar with you know, art terms, a collage can be anything that you want if you kind of put it together. Why do you call your art collages? Oh, well, actually, I call my art a little something different. I use cool colors, cool shapes, and cool textures. So I call my art collages. Get it? <laughs> So you know, if the art thing doesn't work out, Grant, we, we could get you a stand-up routine as well, my friend. <laughs> you got good jokes today. Aw, oh, thank you. <laughs> so here's our sunflower. Look at that. Thank you. Now we're going to work toward work on the seeds, which is the center of the sunflower. We have our peeled puzzles here ready to go. So let's put them on the center. Now those are the puzzle pieces that you took the, the peeling off the front, so it's not the full piece itself, right? Nope, that way it's nice and paper thin. Perfect. And you can just place them onto the canvas with ease. And you don't have to worry about making a perfect circle in the center either. And while Grant's working on this here as well, don't forget if you are watching Insiders, all you have to do in the chat is put in give me art and you are entered in a chance for a giveaway for one of uh, Grant's pieces that we put together here as well and you don't want to miss out on that. He, I mean he, we were literally creating art in front of my eyes here which is pretty amazing. <laughs> Very impressive stuff so. But yeah just remember if you're in there in the chat just give me art. Throw it in there. We've got our a man Derek Shore who is with us as well. He is monitoring said chat and we were going to uh, pick a winner coming up here in just a little bit so you don't want to miss out on that so hopefully Oop. your that creation at home win. looks very similar to what grant is putting together here i can assure you uh derek that mine would not look like this use our wipes again to clean our fingers because like i said working with glue can be a little messy i feel like that's a part of an artist though isn't it grant that you have to get a little messy yes of course now we're going to take our leaves and place them on the stems. I like to go one on top, one on the bottom. And take some glue, a little bit here. Place the first leaf down, just like this. Then we're going to take the second one, put a little glue down here, and put that down just like that. And that's the wallpaper, right? That's right. Okay. Next, we're going to put down the landscape. We're going to put just a little bit of glue on the bottom. And then we're going to put the landscape right on top. And don't worry if it goes over the canvas. Just like with the stem, you can just clip it. Clip it and cut it and shape it so it's right in there. We're almost done, folks. Because now we're on to the final finishing touches, and that is the butterflies. So right here, I've already traced out my butterflies. So now I'm going to take our colorful puzzles. Like I said, you're going to need about 60 pieces. And we're going to start with the small one. Take our glue and our brush. And you don't have to worry about staying within the lines. You can go over them. And you'll see why here in a second. First, let me just go ahead and show you, this pro show you the process. There's the first one. There's two. And there is another, here's another one. 
While you're doing that, Grant, let me ask you a question. You know, a lot of times people do things like art, painting, sculpting as sort of a form of therapy, you know, something that relaxes them or can, you know, just sort of unwind from the day. Do you, do you sort of see that in, in what you do with art here, that it's a form of therapy, something that just kind of cool, you know, relaxes the mind or whatnot? But yes, actually, because my, my art is, because my, aut my autism can give me anxieties and art is a way to help soothe my autism anxieties. Very cool. You know, I feel like it's, that's something when you find what that thing is, uh, especially if it's something as positive as, uh, you know, art and sculpting what you're doing here as well and creating art, you know, it's not only satisfying to you, but as you said before, you and your mom have helped to donate to all kinds of different organizations, you know, not just the art, but to kind of help them. You know, what, what mom, let me ask you this question. Seeing things sort of full circle right now from where he started, just taking art classes as a little kid and now, you know, at 25, creating art, selling <clears throat> it for foundations, over $300,000 for donations, it's, that's quite a journey. Yes, it is, it is. And it did not start out this way. This was a homeschool art project because Grant was then homeschooled because he was bullied in public school. So I brought him home, we homeschooled. He watched a lot of TV, a lot of time on his hand. I said, Grant, you need to do art again. And the art came back because once he was bullied, he stopped the art. It, mm -hmm. The anxieties were too much. So he created actually a piece up there called The Sun God with uh, magazines and calendars. And we were going to sell that piece for $100 because we didn't know what we had on our hands. Well, I actually had to sell that during Hurricane Harvey because everything shut down again, mm -hmm. and I sold it for $7,500. Wow. So that was in a matter of about six years later. And then uh, it just keeps blowing from there because he helps so many people, and his art is therapeutic. Um, you know, it turned into then a part-time job, once homeschooled, part-time, because mm -hmm. my friends wanted to buy the originals but didn't want to sell those, so I sold prints. And then it turned into a full-time job because Grant kept winning awards all the time, mm -hmm. and now we call it an overtime job. There you go. Because <laughs> that's what it feels like. Well, that's generally how these things, these things go at this point. As you mentioned before, um, you know, the, you guys have been doing this art and, and creating it with all these recyclable materials. Where do you find most of these, you know? Oh, people call us. In the beginning, I would search, you know, Goodwill, thrift mm -hmm. shops, wherever I could find colors. He wanted colors, and I drag Grant with me because he has to learn the process of the business, and he would find things there. So and then people just down. started calling us. School started having puzzle drives for Grant, and I used to have a whole garage full of puzzles. And All right, I now that we're done CD, with the so butterflies, like in order, to speed up the process, order, I've already prepared two butterflies with puzzles paper. on tracing paper right. ready to go. So and this is why we use the marker. That way we can see the lines, because now we're going to cut out those cut out these butterflies. We're just going to follow the lines. And now these, are, so if people are doing these at home, Grant, you have to let this dry fully first, right? Yes. Okay. But to save time, I had these prepared, so that way we can just get right to cutting it. You say the magic of television. Because <laughs> typically this takes three to four hours to mm -hmm. finish this piece. So this could be something that you could start with the kids, get the base laid down, Get your butterfly set, let everything kind of rest for a little bit, and then maybe come back to it later in the yes. afternoon. Yes. That's right. Perfect. Now, it's interesting, when Grant was younger, he did not have fine motor skills the way you see now. I'm a seamstress by trade, so I guess watching me in that, I always say your kids are a product of your environment. And I'm a seamstress, There's I the cut first a lot one. of fabric, and his motor skills finally came, you know, caught up with him, and now, look, he can, he's, he's amazing. Fantastic. We have one, we have them cut, we, we have them cut out, but to speed up the process, so again, I have two butterflies right here already cut out and ready to go. So now, we're going to place them onto the canvas, but first, we're going to need to put our hairpins down, because these are the antenna of the butterfly. So we're going to put one, I'm going to say one right here, and another one right there. And you don't have to work, and you don't have to place them down exactly the way I place them, because they're butterflies. They go all over the place, up, down, all around. 
but you're gonna put, you need to put a little bit of glue on the bottom half to make sure it stays down. Just like that. And now, you're gonna take your glue and your butterfly and you're gonna put a lot of glue on the back. Just like this. And you and don't worry, you can you need you should use a lot. Because once you have all the whole, a lot of glue on the back, you're gonna take the butterfly, go onto the bottom half of the antenna, and you're gonna press and hold. I give it about a good 10, 20 seconds. But there's actually a secret there's actually a secret method to this. I'll show you that here in a, in a little bit. Make sure it's make sure it's a good amount. There we go. Oh, that part was coming out. There we go. Now we take the big butterfly and do the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna put a lot of glue on the back. So be generous with that glue is what you're saying. Grant. That's right. And once you have enough, do the same thing. Go to the bottom half of the antenna and just press it and hold it for another good 10, 20 seconds. And then, voila, you have a sunflower. But not until you sign it. And this makes a great Mother's Day gift too. But once you sign it, you, you can call it your own. So, take our, mar take our marker here and I'm gonna sign it. One. Voila! Bingo! Let's see that. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Now here are some helpful, here's some helpful hints. You can take some wax paper, and place it on top of the canvas, and then you take a book, and you press it right on top. That way it's completely flat. And I, and I would say set it for about a couple hours. And then once it's dried, you can take some Mod Podge and give it a give it a glaze, give it a bit of a light coat, then protect it from the elements. Now, Grant, tell us what Mod Podge is, because I know that's something that that a lot of artists use and whatnot. I I've, I've heard a little bit about it, but if, if folks don't really know what it's for, what do you use it for? Like I said, I use the Mod Podge to give it a slight, give it a light glaze, so it gives a shine and to protect it from the elements. And that you can get at any craft store as well. That's right. Protect it from water, heat, that kind. And so let me go ahead and take all of this off so I know it's still wet. And there. And there. That's our, there's sunflower. our sunflower. Look at that. So again, I want to thank you for having me on here. I'm with you today. If you'd like to know more about me and my eco art, just visit my website, Jigsaw like a puzzle, jigsawgrant.com. My name is Grant Monnier, and remember, it's not what you can't do that makes you different. It's what you can do that makes you more. Excellent. Well done. Thank man. you, everyone, and have a nice day. Good job, buddy. Very, very impressed as well. I'll tell you what, insiders. <laughs> I hope you guys have had a chance to enjoy that as well. I, I don't believe how fast that Grant put that together. <laughs> I'm really impressed, my friend. I really am. You know, and remember, if you get a chance, if you want to get a piece or win a piece of one of Grant's art in the chat here, just put, give me art. Now, I do want to say, Grant, I've got a couple questions for you as well, because your mom told me that you're, you guys are getting ready for a big move, right? That's right. Okay, tell me about it. Where are you going? Uh we're gonna we're gonna for the summer we're gonna head out head up to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to uh, work for my college tuition for my towards media production. Fantastic! So, get that up. That's exciting. Good. Well, good, good, good. Well, you know what? Listen, we hope the best for you, my friend. Really appreciate you letting us in your house like this and, and get to see not only art in motion, um, but you, you as an individual. You're you're an amazing young man. Oh, thank really, you so really, much. Really, really proud of you. Um, as you said, you know, you take something that sometimes you're, you're dealt different hands and you know what you decided? You're like, I got an ace in my pocket. Watch this. I'll throw oh, thank it. Thank you. 
Do you want to tell them which is your favorite piece, Grant? Oh, always. Artists always have a favorite piece. Oh, that is a tough one. Is Mike. it like your children? You love them all? No. <laughs> yeah, my favorite piece. But I'll say this. Okay. If there was a fire, uh -huh. I grab whatever's closest to the door. That's probably a smart decision. But if you ask me what is my best piece, mm -hmm. my answer is always my next one. There you go. Spoken like a true artist. Thank you. Well done, my friend. Awesome. Well, Derek, I'll tell you what. It's been uh, 45 minutes. We went from a uh, blank canvas to a sunflower and some butterflies. And I am just as impressed as I could be at this point. You know, and the, and the crazy thing is, these were all materials, as we said, is things that you can find either at Goodwill store. I thought that's a great point because, you know, you can take the kids out and say, okay. And, and, and as Grant mentioned before, his thing is colors, right? So if you have an idea in your head of what color you want to use, you can go find that. Not only that, the recycling material and, of course, uh, wallpaper, which we have everywhere, right? Most folks probably have some sitting in their garage right now. That's right. And look what you could do with it. So um, it's been really amazing here as well. Is there any uh, questions that you've got on your end uh, that we could ask Grant or his mom here? We do, in fact, Justin. And uh, I want to circle back okay, to something we spoke away. about at the top of the hour, the fact that, uh, well, first of all, Grant just makes everything look easy, right? I want to ask about the book. Right. But sit tight, though, because before we circle back to you and Grant and Julie to talk about this book that I have right here in my hand. I do want to announce our winners for that giveaway we mentioned. They're the ones who typed give me okay. art in today's chat box. I don't know if we have a drum roll, but we have a couple winners. Nancy Bearden and Linda, sure. we will be in touch with you both on how you can collect your winnings. Congratulations. And uh, also, we do want to highlight someone who is joining us today. I want to take a moment to share a picture of a piece of eco art shared with us by Lisa Schlichter, who signed up for today's event. Take a look. Very nice. Lisa wrote, we made these frames in the Marikai Art Sisterhood, a support group for women with mental illness. First, we used old bed slats and cut them with a table slot to build a frame. Then we decorated them. She adds, I decorated mine with material from an old blanket and wrapped it around the frame. I added some ribbon, flowers, and some sweet bumblebee. Very nice. I added some little clips to hang my Marikai cards on. She promotes positive psychology, so she used the expression, spread the sunshine, that she'd heard from a fantastic therapist. So, thank you so much for sharing that work of art, Lisa. It is beautiful. All right, Justin, circling back to you and Grant and Julie. Again, I have yes, my sir. art kit here that uh, Grant helped prepare for me, so I'm going to get to work on that a little, a little later on today. But in the meantime, let's talk about this book, Grant the Jigsaw Giraffe and Friends, Dr. Temple Grandin Meets Grant and His Friends. Can you ask him about the book? Because I'm not sure. Oh, you have one too. Perfect. I was going to say, we've got one right here. Yeah, uh, so uh, Derek wanted to ask a little bit about the book here, uh, Julie and, and, and Grant, kind of like how did this come together and what, what is the book for? Well, we started out with the first book, Grant the Jigsaw Giraffe, Different is More, and after watching Grant make these amazing pieces and create this particular giraffe, he did not want to use spots. He wanted to use his signature mark, which were puzzles. Of course. It's a very big piece, and all these pieces are in an exhibit right now. And I said, oh, Grant, that's so you, a gentle giant. And he allowed me to name this one, and it's Grant, the Jigsaw Giraffe. And then my girlfriend says, well, you have a regular zoo. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could write a story about that. <laughs> so I wrote a story about Grant first. So that's the other book over there. And it's about art and this young giraffe who wants to be a painter, but he doesn't know how he's going to hold a paintbrush with his hooves. So he has challenges. So Mama Jules, which is me in the book, uh, just tells Grant to go around the zoo, visit your friends, get, pick up some inspiration. And of course, the book is about eco art as well. But then I was approached to write other books mm -hmm. about other topics. So my second second book is about dyslexia. My third book is about the pandemic, mm -hmm. and I was challenged on that one to write it. So I said, okay, I'll give it a try. But my animals aren't sick. The animals at the zoo are worried about their people <coughs> friends, and they want to know where their people friends are. So Dr. Mitchell, the raccoon, he explains to the animals and to Grant what's going on with their people friends during mm -hmm. the pandemic. And then my uh, next book, after that was about childhood cancer, and that one's about Abigail Arias. I was approached to write her story. So, of course, she's a llama, and uh, she continues on in the book with Grant, 
Right. And then this is our next book, Dr. Temple Grandin, which is Grant's uh, uh, mentor. Right there, she is the most well-known person with autism. Time Magazine, 100 Most Influential People in the World, and an HBO movie after Temple Grandin. This topic is the autism spectrum. So this is a beautiful topic. We've, we've introduced 15 new characters on the spectrum. And the spectrum is from, you know, as Temple would say, we are not saying high, moderate, or low functioning anymore. This book is going to uh, introduce the concept that Temple wants now for us to use full verbal abilities, partial verbal abilities, and non-verbal abilities. Those are the terms we are going to use from this point on. Mm -hmm. But again, it's about autism, and all our characters explain their different kinds of autism on the range, and even Grant's cousins are in this because they have autism as well. So that is our book about autism. You can find it again at jigsawgrant.com. Mm -hmm. Perfect, that's fantastic. So I do have to ask you one question, Grant. What is it about the giraffe? Why, why, why did you like the giraffes the best? Well, when I was making a giraffe, it was part, be part of my animal collection. Uh -huh. But of course, like my mom said, I didn't want to use normal spots. Sure. I used my jigsaw puzzle markings instead. And one thing led to another. It's, it's really me, but with a twist. That is I'm true. a giraffe. I'm you a giraffe, giraffe too. That's right. All, all skinny. I love it. I love it. I think <laughs> That's it's right. It really is. You know, it, it's nice that both of you um, have become advocates as well for people that maybe don't have as big a role, a big a voice, right. and to let them know that you know it's 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 not you're not alone. Yes, that, that we're here with you. Yes, and, and we're, gonna walk, we're gonna walk through all these challenges. We're gonna walk mm -hmm. through all, everything we need to do and get through That's that right. path. And I always tell my parents, look for that behavior that may be annoying, quirky, even um, you know just can drive some people crazy, like Grant tearing paper. And listen, don't just look. Listen to what they're trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. And in Grant's case, you know, I was asked to make him stop tearing paper. What if I had? We had not. We would not see this. I was so saying, I, I, got a, I got a whole plate yeah, full of it right here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I, yeah. I forgot to tell you that Grant is the illustrator of all of our books. I would hope so. You have that's, an artist that's here. That's why we're going to uh, school in Wisconsin, so Very he can cool. study animation, illustration, and even what you do over there, Alan. I that's think what it's he great. wants to do. I'm really, production. really proud of you, man. Derek, anything else from uh, your end there? It's you know, it, it's just it's amazing to see that that we're just plugging along here. You guys uh, have had us all captivated today, and I know Grant and Julie probably cannot hear me, Justin, but please tell them uh, a heartfelt hello for me and all of us here at KPRC2. And Alan, who is the one holding the camera, give our best to Alan as well. Thanks, Justin. You bet, my friends. You know I will. That was really cool to watch. I know Grant has a very bright future ahead. Well, thanks so much to our insiders for joining us today. Remember, if you have followed along today and want to show off your art, or if you've created an eco art project in the past, please share it with us by emailing it to insider at kprc.com. And if you'd like to watch this demonstration again, it will be available on clicktohouston.com. Thanks again to Grant Monnier, his mom, Julie, KPRC2 meteorologist, Justin Stapleton, our photographer, Alan, and to all of you, our KPRC2 insiders, for joining us today online. For all of us here at KPRC2, I'm Derek Shore. Take care, and we'll see you again very soon.